I sliced my wedding album right down the middle to make what I think might be the coolest picture frame ever. This entire project was made using a desktop CNC router and incorporates some pretty cool wooden gears and ratchet systems. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I made it, and if you have a CNC at home, don't forget to check out the video description. I'm Justin, and welcome back to Aquavita Woodworks. So first things first, I am going to go ahead and cheat a lot on the milling process here since I already pre-ordered these walnut project boards uh, from online. I got them from a company called Okooch Hardwoods, at least I think that's how you pronounce it. It is kind of expensive to ship and I have absolutely no affiliation with them, but they are really good quality and it's kind of nice that all you need to do is just cut them down to the dimensions that you need. I also bought a piece of maple from Lowe's that came already cut down to the right size, and if you're wondering what those dimensions are, just refer to page 7 and 8 of the build manual. The four acrylic sheets you may have noticed on page 8 were purchased off Amazon, but don't worry too much about those until later on. Let's just move right into the fun part and actually machine these pieces. When it comes to work holding, I'll be using clamps to secure all of my stock down to the wasteboard, but for the two walnut components, I also want to use some double-sided tape just because of those parts being a little bit more fragile. Another important note here when it comes to work holding is that when you're actually assigning toolpaths within your CAD program, make sure that you're adding tabs to all your outside contours so your parts don't go flying off the machine. For all the information you need regarding CNC toolpaths and how to assign them, refer to pages 10 through 13 for the component shown here. Moving on to component number two, we'll stick with pocket and contour toolpaths to cut out our pieces. The only difference here is that this is half inch stock, which allows us to get a little bit more fancy and carve some stacked gears. Right now I'm using an eighth inch downcut bit to machine out these parts, but for the wooden components in this project, you'll also need to have a sixteenth inch downcut bit and a quarter inch downcut bit. The only somewhat unique end mill you'll need for this project is this 16th inch single O flute bit that's used for cutting the acrylic that I mentioned earlier and I'm still not quite ready to talk about. If you're missing any of those end mills, I'll post affiliate links to Bits and Bits Company down in the video description. And if you don't need any bits, well then I guess just hit the subscribe button. Anyway, let's move on to component number three. We're going to add a drilling toolpath to this component to make room for screw holes and also carve out an interesting shape that kind of looks like a and if you want to investigate that a little further, check out pages 21 through 24. I put an outrageous amount of time and effort into these plans, so I'm pretty confident that they're going to answer any questions that you may have, uh, but once you're finished with these first three components, this is what they should look like. Now let's move on to post-machining. When it comes to breaking free our parts, I like to cut the tabs using a multi-tool, and then head over to the spindle sander to sand down any bumps. Of course, when it comes to the smaller part, it's going to take a lot of hand sanding to remove all the fuzzies and what's left of the tabs, but I'm sure as you all know, sanding is important, so take your time. A few years ago on one of my projects involving gears, one of my viewers pointed me toward these little sanding doohickeys that go into your drill press, and I have to say, these help a whole lot while sanding gears. Before I can move on to finishing, I do need to countersink four holes in the bottom of the base, as well as on the side of one of the gears and ratchet. I also figured it'd be a good idea to round over the edges of the side panels, so I did that with the router table. And finally I did a dry assembly of the main barrel and pre-drilled holes through the end caps into the support rods to make my life easier later on when I need to screw them together. The finishing process that I like to use is not fancy at all, this is just spray lacquer that I purchased from Lowe's. I added three or four coats sanding with 800 grit in between each one uh, before letting these sit and cure for a few days. Before I can call these totally finished, I do want to add these quarter inch bearings onto the components that are going to be spinning once we put everything together. But after that, it's finally time for assembly. Utilizing the holes that I pre-drilled earlier, I'm going to assemble the main barrel by adding a ratchet and gear on either side of the end caps before screwing it together. Once everything's tightened up, that should be pretty solid, and we can now move on to my favorite part of this project, uh, the ratchet and pawl. After drilling an eye hook into that tiny pawl that we carved on the CNC machine, I'm going to attach a spring and install it into the component that has that funny little shape that we mentioned earlier. 
After drilling a hole to mark its location, the other end of the spring gets attached to a second eye hook, and that should complete this mechanism. I just think this is so cool since it's made of wood, but maybe that's just me. Moving on to a not so fun portion, I do need to use a hacksaw to cut metal dowel rod to the lengths specified on page 6 of the build manual. Uh, this is an annoying process, just take your time and make sure to use a file to clean up the edges when you're done. I'm way more specific in the plans, but essentially we're just gluing this metal rod in different locations around our project and then sliding the gears over the top of them to secure them in place. The drive gear and crank get attached by gluing each one to opposite ends of a rod that's passed through the side panels, and then that larger stacked gear we made gets attached by hammering in a lock washer. And unfortunately, at this point when I'm adding on this smaller gear at the end of our barrel mechanism is when I realized I made an absolutely ginormous mistake and actually need to remake the side panels completely. Essentially, that upper left drive gear shouldn't be interlocked with the larger stacked gear at all. Instead, it should be moved up a slight bit and driving the smaller gear, which in turn drives the larger gear. This is what the new piece should look like. With that giant issue fixed, I repeated the process for attaching the gears that we did earlier, uh, but this time I decided to add paste wax to try to reduce any friction between the gears. I think that ended up working pretty good, so I moved on to attaching the smallest gear to the end of the gear-sided barrel, uh, and attaching that to the side panels where the drive gear is. The opposite end gets attached to the ratchet and pawl system, and then those two side panels get placed onto our base and screwed in from the bottom. And without further ado, here is the final product before we add the pictures. I'm happy to say that everything seems to be working as it should. The gears are running extremely smoothly, and the ratchet and pawl system makes a pretty wicked clicking sound, which I just really like. But of course, we're not done yet because obviously this frame is missing something, so let's move on to the final step of this project, adding the pictures. I bought this double-sided tape off Amazon that makes it extremely easy to attach all the photographs to the backs of these acrylic flaps that I'm finally ready to show you how to make on your machine. Because the wasteboard on my Shapoko has T-Track in it, I didn't want to lay thin acrylic sheets over those valleys and have the bit kind of push it down, which might warp the carve. Instead, I'm going to use the painter's tape and CA glue method to attach the acrylic to a secondary MDF wasteboard I lay over the top. This certainly isn't the most cost-effective method, but it is the best way I've found to carve acrylic. The 16th inch O-flute bit that we're using to carve this does a great job of cutting through the plastic, as well as getting into the dog bones that are in each of the inside corners of these flaps. Cleaning everything up is pretty simple using rags and Kleenex once they're off the machine, uh, but before you can be totally finished, you do need to do this entire process three more times. And if you're curious what this thing looks like when there's blank flaps installed, well, here it is. To attach the pictures themselves, all you need to do is line up the pictures on two of the flaps and then use a razor blade to cut them in half. Then you take the top half of that picture you just glued, flip it upside down, and that becomes the bottom of the next picture you glue in the sequence. Just repeat that process 28 more times, uh, add all your photos into the barrel, and voila! Here's the final product. As you watch this flip through the photos, I just wanted to say thank you for making it this far into the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and if you don't mind, please leave a comment letting me know what you think I should build next. Uh, anyway, this is Aquavita Woodworks, and we'll see you next time.